Hi guys, Simon here, part eight. Part eight. <laughs> You're gluttons for punishment. This could be the last one. Maybe not. We've left it. Michael's just had the best night of his life in the bedroom with Cum. They get up, they have breakfast. Michael's in love again. The story all makes sense. What she has done with this man. They get breakfast. Off to the lawyers, sign the final paperwork. She's got one million bucks in her pocket. She's going off to Samui. They say goodbye. She says, I'm going to Samui. I'm going to pay this man. He's going. I'm going to sell the business. This could take you a few months. I love you. I want you. Have a think about it. If you don't want me, I'll understand and I'll raise the one million, give it you back. She's special. She's already given him two million back. She's not in it for the money. She loves him, but she's done something really bad in her life. Can Michael live with that? Can he understand it? Can he forgive her? Can he forgive her for cheating on him? It wasn't her fault. She was being blackmailed. <sighs> Off she goes. Michael thinks I've got to, I've got to talk somebody, talk to somebody about this. I can't not. Checks out the hotel, jumps in a cab, off to Patea. Goes straight to his friend's condo. One of his friends, the, the one who's more close than the other one, knocks on the door. Friends there, he says, "Can I stay for a night? I've got some stuff I need to talk to somebody about." need some help friends come on in goes in and they spend the day he tells his friend even though Kung said don't tell anybody he had to tell somebody he's told his friend the story and his friend's like oh, you crazy man you cannot get involved with someone who's done this you know they could end up in jail and okay you got your money back nearly walk away don't do it don't get involved. You've got off lightly now. Walk away. And he's like, Yep, yeah, you're right indeed. He said, You're dead right. I need to walk away. He said, Thank you. He stays the night, they have a meal, catches up with the other friend. Didn't tell them the story. He's had a night in Patea. And he wakes up in the morning and he thinks, I'm going to Phuket. I'm going to go to Phuket and spend some time down there and think about my life and the future. 67 years old, he's still healthy. He's still got 9 million baht in the bank, or thereabouts. He's still in a good position. Just his heart is broken and his head is scrambled. He's wandering about a bit, so yeah, he leaves Patea up to the airport. Flight, Phuket. He's never been to Phuket. He's always heard about it, seen stories, seen pictures. Lands in at Phuket and he heads to uh, Patong Beach because it's the main area people usually start. Finds a hotel, nice four star, nice swimming pool. It's about 3,000 baht a night. Money at this point means nothing to him. It's like a bit of luxury. I think it was the Holiday Inn he was staying at. It's uh, next, near the beach. Anyway, he checks in, books it for at least a week, and uh, starts having a wander around. Over the next couple of days, he's learning the area, um, and he's got his eye on Karen Beach, I think it is, just along the road a bit. He's thinking, once this hotel the week's up, he's going to move along there. And he gets a phone call from Kung. He's like, Okay, she's on the phone. I've got a Swedish guy interested in the guest house. I've put it up for seven and a half million baht, the whole business. He's offered six and a half cash. Now they paid um, with all the building work, I think it was five in the end. And then they started the motorcycle business. So this is a profit. And Michael said, well, that's great. Take it, do it. 
uh, and she said, where are you? He said, I'm in Phuket. He said, what's happened to that man? She said, I've paid him. He's gone. Um, I want to get out of here, then there'll be no, he won't be able to find me again, I'll be gone and that's it. She said, it'll take a few weeks for this guy to sort the money and everything out, but let's, you know, I'll do it. And then I'll ring you once it's sorted. Set phone down, it's good. He's going to get his million baht back from the profit, maybe even a touch more. And at that point, he can still walk away. All good, really good. So he's got a couple of weeks now before she's done that. He finishes at the Holiday Inn and he goes up Karen Beach, finds a hotel up there. Um, he's gone for luxury now, he's gone into five star. It's four and a half thousand baht a night. But it, now he's can see a bit of light at the end of the tunnel and the money doesn't matter. So he's checked into this nice hotel. For a few days he's wandering around that area, looking around Phuket. It's beautiful, absolutely loves it. He's never been there, as I said before. He's, it's the best place he's ever been in Thailand. Water's blue, there's people about that end, is quieter, not too many tourists. It's now coming to the end of the high season. Really nice. He's rung his friends up in Patea and said, look, He's, uh, the business is sold, it's, uh, he's going to get his money back and he's in Phuket, everything's good. His friend said to him, that's fantastic, you're so lucky, now walk away. <laughs> she's special, she's different, she's bad but she's special, can't get her out of his head. It all makes sense now to him, why she was with that other guy, it wasn't out of, out of her choice. She was being forced, so she was still special. It wasn't her fault. 10 o'clock morning, next morning, he's gone down to the beach and he's found this cafe, bar, does a nice breakfast. Fate, how things happen to people. He's eating his breakfast on the table next to him, just a couple of feet away. There's an Australian couple, uh, and a little bit of a heated argument, but and he overhears that they've got financial problems, and he's sort of half listening in, eating his breakfast, and he hears the guy talk about they've got to sell their business, they've got to get out, they've got to go home, they're short of money, financial problems. Remember Michael, first time he saw Kung stood against the tree. She smiled. He's nosy, he's got to go over and see her. He's here again, these two business financial problems. He's got to be nosy. <laughs> he says, Excuse me, I'm really sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to listen to your conversation, but I heard you've got a few problems. You might be selling a business. I'm uh, maybe in the market for a business. Really, Michael? I thought, Why would you get another business? <laughs> He wanted to retire to Thailand with no love, no girlfriend, no businesses. Oh my God. And they sort of, yeah, we've, we've got a hotel. We, uh, yeah, we've had a few problems and uh, we want to go home and we want to sell up. God, here we go again. So they start talking about the hotel and uh, they said, come and have a look at it. It's just up the road, we've got a car. Yeah, finishes his breakfast. Off he goes with them. Lovely couple. Gets down the road and there, 100 metres from the beach, just on the other side of the, a bit of a road where there's a car park for tourists to park, is this 10 bedroom hotel with a, the 10th room is a penthouse on the top behind that penthouse, the other half of the back, is a beautiful condo that they live in. 10 bedroom, hotel, condo at the top, beautiful. All the hotels done up, immaculate. Car parking space at the front, hammered. And they've got a four by four car and a couple of motorcycles. 
everything's furnished they've got bookings for the next year and in low season beautiful hotel beautiful position absolutely gorgeous they want 10 million baht for it it's probably worth it Michael's like oh that's a lot of money it's beautiful really nice he said look I'm gonna think it's a bit steep for me and they're sort of like we really need to get ourselves out of debt and get home consider making us an offer please he said look, I'm gonna go away for a couple of days take the details number he looks at it, it's like wow that'd be perfect absolutely perfect business anyway says goodbye off back hotel yeah you can see this coming can't you you know what's gonna happen she's special she is really special she's different she's tall thin beautiful long dark hair 44 years old now still can't get over that wrinkly skin beautiful dresses bad girl she's giving his money back they're in love she sells the business in Samui she gets the money she packs up gets on the phone and uh, yeah in the meantime Michael's rung this people at the hotel gone back and had another look and they're getting desperate he can see it and he, he said my business partner's a couple of weeks away before we've sold our business I'll be in touch and he's gone back so a couple of weeks later Kung on the phone business sold money's in the bank got his money and a profit she's paid that guy a million he's gone she wants to get away now and no trade no trail he can't find her again where are you Michael I'm in Phuket tells her where he is she gets on a plane comes down to his hotel <laughs> walks in with her bags as if nothing's gone happened jumped all over him giving him another C and two it's as if nothing's happened and he's like oh I've got to forgive her for what's happened I've got to forget it we're just perfect for each other absolutely perfect yeah He takes Kung next day to see this hotel and explains to her the situation with these people. Kung can't believe it. I mean, not only has he caught her in bed with another guy, she's told him her life story now, what she's done. They've got money back in the bank. She's given his money back. Everything's good. They've got profit, a little bit. And now here she is in Phuket with Michael, who's still in love with her he's showing her a business which is even better and bigger the dream hotel and these people are desperate for money <laughs> so they made um, about a million and a half back on their business since the movie take his million back so they got half a million back profit she's got a couple of million back in her bank he's got his money three million in his bank and they're ready to start again. Remember his friends, don't do it. Leave, go away. Don't do it. He does. They sit down with this couple on the nice hotel. Kung, brilliant businesswoman, offers them, offers them seven million bar. Done. And they're, no, we want 10 million. We can't afford to lose this much. And Kung <laughs> says to Michael, we can't afford it, we can only afford seven. Such a shame, beautiful hotel and all this. Sorry, okay. If you change your mind, let us know. But seven million, we, you can have it in within a few days. She's presuming Michael's going to cough up again. And they get up and walk out. Off back, hotel. Couple of days wandering around Phuket and they're starting to fall in love again like a couple of lovebirds. Phone rings. Michael's phone. A couple from the hotel. 
if he can raise 7.25, seven and a quarter million baht, they would sell the hotel to them, including the car and the bikes and all the furnishings, lock, stock and barrel, website, bookings, the lot. Michael says yes. He's not got his friends run, leave, come, go away. No, he's just agreed to buy a hotel, 10 bedroom with Kung. Kung's got two and a half million baht. He's going to have to find five million baht. Again, it's going to be lawyers, paperwork, buy it, set it all up. But yeah, he's talked to Kung. He said, I forgive you for what you've done. I love you. If you ever hurt me again or do anything again, then that'll be it. <laughs> he's 67. He's again, new business. So over the following week, they find lawyers in Phuket. They do all the paperwork, both sign it, they get the money, buy the hotel, they've got it. And they move into their new hotel. There you go. Happy ending, all in love, everything fine, perfect. Brilliant. Catch you on the next one. There's more.